BKB coming out for the Razor as well. And then, I mean, they don't have amazing stun potential either on Gaming Gladiators to be able to lock the Storm Spirit in. Should still see an earlyish BKB for BZM, but uh, certainly does make it a little bit more challenging when you don't have that full complement of heroes to make his life a little bit more difficult. Up lane. They're going to try and make an attempt onto Yuragi with a rotation. Not a seller. They telekinesis him back inside the pit, but with Yuragi's stolen damage, he'll get a return kill, looking nice. for the deny, and he finds it as well. So, yeah, it's an okay exchange. Uh, one for two, one for one, I suppose. It's a lot of time spent out of the lane, though. Uh, you've got uh, Ace not going to be able to immediately shove it in. Of course, CM would be able to uh, to TP up there if she wanted to, but instead, with some of those rotations towards mid, Ofu, he feel, refills Quinn's bottle, gets a D ward off. Ooh. Iger needs to do the same sort of thing. It just mm, Quinn just also D warded like a minute ago, so both the wards they placed out mid from OG. It's got removed, and we'll see where the power rune's going to go as well. Once again, both sides bringing their duo supports to try and secure it. We'll be top, though. Quinn. There's a haste to work with now. He's paid up his Dota Plus. <laughs> he yes, knows. He, he knows where the wins are got. David always smiles on him. Yeah. Just having two supports off and rotating to your lane do help matters. Do indeed. So BZM maybe is going to start to think about going back and farming up the jungle to try and open up mid for Tiger, who does still kind of have to be a little bit cautious. This constant slight spam with the orb of corrosion will be very frustrating for the CM with low armor. I know they've done a lot to be able to fix... Oh, nice. Uh, aggressive glyph as well. They're making sure to try and keep that flag bearer creep alive for as long as possible, keep the siege creep alive for as long as possible. I wonder if Quinn even wants to tank a couple of tower hits as well, but won't be able to do it in time to be able to save the siege, but still... Up lane. Yeah, you're argue. I mean, once again, another rotation coming through the portal from Cellar in. As soon as they see some of the supports playing away from the Razor, That's GG's they know side, this brother. is a free kill. I mean, there's nowhere he's going to be able to run, unfortunately. I mean, that is... Dude, Ace's top network! Yeah, I just looked at that What's as well. What's going on? And he's a got thousand. 21 charges, so there's no way that he's going to be dying up on this top side. Still only 500 gold away from the Vanguard, and at that point it just becomes an absolute certainty. Really getting a lot of value out of even just that one point in the Pit of Malice, and even now, there are a lot of creeps just hitting into this tower. Importantly though, Tiger is up here with him, but I think even if they feel like they can go onto Ace, that is not the reality of the situation. Rachu is a little low though on this bottom he side. Is. Yeah, almost hitting up onto his level six. So I wonder if this is going to force him entirely back into the jungle. He's finished up the Morbid Mask as well, so has the ability to just keep himself semi-survivable as Quinn. Lane. Super remnants over to the right. Yeah, I'm still gonna zip on over. <laughs> <laughs> Another well, rune. So let's see if they actually want to try and target down the timber. Maybe. Oh, there's some juicy stacks for them to take instead. This is. Uh oh, it's a lot of economic damage. Yeah, and you know that it's here, right? You're playing against a coddle that I'm sure the communication between Celery and the rest of the team oh. has been there. And yeah, BZM, you're just a little late, my friend, to be able to do anything about it. So that's a lot of gold that you've just given away. You'll at least be able to get the D ward off, but the damage is done. Damage is indeed done, so. I mean, you're still probably going to look to try and play through BZM through a lot of your early game movements. He's going to have the trades completed pretty shortly. Uh, seven and a half at the moment as well. Maybe their first rotation might be down to bottom to even combine with DM with a lot of his uh, damage potential. But at the moment, gaming gladiators and once again, all their supports playing around mid, they've been able to accumulate a 3,000 net worth lead. And Tofu is even just yoinking away a lot of this farm. GG are just getting away with everything. You know, they've got these super deep wards up, they're denying wards, they're getting both power runes, they're making rotations up towards to give Ace a much freer game. And now they can play away from Ace. They were really, that was the MO, right? Make sure that this top lane doesn't go horribly, and then we're free to just play with these trio of supports and mid laner. And now the D ward. Yeah. Oh my god. And now the ward mid, dude. That's taken care of. They've done their homework. Some people place their wards in habitual sort of areas, and 
they even still have that uh, that wood. Doesn't seem like it, but CM doesn't. Well, he's got a decent amount of mana to be able to make plays with, but he's not the main target, and he doesn't have the damage as a result of a lot of those power runes not going his way. Oh. Oh. Pretty aggressively is BZM. Said though, he's not really the main target here from Gaming Gladiators. They'd like the kills onto the supports. It does... They just push them away from the power room. Yes, so. exactly. I mean, they're going to be praying that it's bottom this time around. Are they going to luck out? They will. Oh, I was thinking he might have gone for a quick yoink there with the slide of fist on Quinn. Not quite there. Plus side is, using all the mana, doesn't matter. You've got Seb there just to be able to regenerate things. Maybe start building up some stacks again. But DM has taken over this bottom side a little bit. Is this kind of the an opening now for OG to maybe look to make a play? Because it's really been gaming gladiators that have been proactive currently. But with the trades and now Arcane Rune on BZM, are you considering about maybe going to a side lane and looking for a kill? Possibly. I mean, the, the thing is, though, it's the 10 minute mark. So Quinn is just pushing this mid lane. He's got the Orb of Corrosion. You've got a Siege Creep here. They can still pop the Glyph to be able to slow this one down. But you really want to be making Dyer's those more active tower. plays. And are they even going to Glyph this? He would have had another refresh off the back of that, so... We're just a little bit out of sorts here on OG. want to see who's going to reveal themselves, but with mm. the storm and no one revealing on the lane, it means that... Radiance bottom tower. And Gladiators are playing a little bit more conservatively. Uh, still hasn't revealed under any sort of vision yet, but this is the time that you're really wanting to make a lot of those aggressive plays. Kind of hiding behind the trees. So yeah, looks like Tofu is going to be the kill. Pretty nice reaction up with the telekinesis. Then we're going to try and gate in as well to have some extra reinforcements for the further fight. Tofu should still go down. Celery dies as well inside the river. But Gaming Gladiators importantly bring all that cause to potentially turn the tides. But maybe with DM showing up, it could be fire where OG stands strong. So we're able to get the kill onto Ace. High net worth member that gets taken care of. Now the Archer is in some trouble as well. And the waveform doesn't even come out. So with the Arcane Rune, they get maximum effectiveness out of it. And DM shows up very early on on the Timbersaw. That's the sort of thing that I was expecting to see out of this OG draft. It's just that GG did everything right in the first, like, 10 or so minutes of this game, taking that tower. Well, they're even going to be able to yoink away this regen rune. Hasn't popped it just yet. We'll be able to get away, but potentially look to make another kill happen. I mean, Seller is revealing on this top side. He's not quite up to that level 6 just yet. Maybe he's just looking to use that nice little start that he got to get a bit closer towards that Orca Malevolence. Definitely, like, stops a lot of the momentum that GG were, were being able to build so far through the, you know, the first 12 minutes. That was a huge engagement from OG where they can start to maybe chill out. You are kind of lacking some levels on the supports. I mean, Tiger in particular is only level 5. I don't even know where the first Wisdom Rooms went. Let's take a look. Tofu got one, and Seb got one as well. So, yeah, it was just a one-for-one one trade. Dyer. I mean, the thing is, though, it felt like both of those, uh, well, every single lane actually was going like at least 500 net worth in favor of Gaming Gladiators previously. So that that engagement going so heavily in favor of OG, a four for one trade. Sure, you give up your around OG aren't going to let the stacks be yoinked away from them once again. They're recovering somewhat, and CM is going into just an early-ish play map. Wants to be able to respond to some of the aggression that's going to be coming out from the game of Gladiators. I'm looking to see a DM Timbersaw all throughout this tournament. He's got a very good one. It just feels like they, they haven't given him the, the confidence to be able to do it. So this is the game to be able to say to all the haters, no, 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 I am still one of the better Timber players in the world. Radiant scanning. See if he's going to be able to get them over the finish line, line. Finish line though. Because you've got Yuragi with a Midas, so he's wanting as much time as he possibly can get. And unfortunately, he's going to be the target of this smoke. Now, he's in a pretty decent position with a creep wave to pop it. And with the slide off the mark, Yuragi... Okay, they're actually going to look to TP and then counter smoke. For he's yet to go to the T1 tower. going to be able to stab gaming gladiators deep inside their own jungle. Jungle. They're going to put all their attention onto Quinn, but the remnant's still there to work with, but the Ember's soaking up a lot of the damage. So it tries to step over to the right side. BZM's completely out of mana. It's going to be off to DM if they're able to secure the kill, and with the chain over the top, need a little bit more spell damage. Can they get it? They will be able to. Beautifully done. BZM, along with four other members, are required out of OG to stop that smoke. Love that play as well. Sure they would 
very keen to fight as far over to the left hand side as possible. It was a pretty early nether ward drop by uh, that was able to be constantly scouted out by the Razor, even when he's in that fog of war. So made sure that he was able to stay as far away from that, focused it down first and foremost, and that just opened up the, the fight so heavily for OG to be on the, the positive side of it. I mean, there are seven-ish hundred gold away, maybe 800 or so when you take the recipe in account for that Lotus Orb. So you've got a bit of a response now towards, you know, things like the attribute shift, the replicate you can get out of the Pit of Malice, you can get out of the chains. So yeah, he's certainly delivering with this early game. Really impressed with how active he's been getting here for DM and hopefully we're going to continue to see that be the case as well. I mean, this is also a pretty cool item, Tiger going Veil. But you are, I guess that could also be one critique about OGs. You are very reliant on all your spells to do damage. So you're potentially looking at some early BKBs. Ace has got a pipe, which can maybe help mitigate some of that. But of course, we're going to imagine Quinn's going to go BKB after the Maelstrom. Big question of is when Duraccio wants it, though, because we said, you know, Scepter looks very, very good this game. Whether he feels like it's required of a BKB just to be able to maybe give him time to even get towards that third item Scepter. We will see. We will see, and I really feel like OG's big time is prior to Quinn getting into this BKB for himself. You know, they, you can have all of the magic resist that you want with a pipe, but DM is still going to be able to rip through you. All of that is pure damage. You know, a pipe is going to be able to do jack against it. And now he's got that Lotus Orb to be able to make plays with, right? So, you know, you just want to make sure that you're able to convert on a lot of these kill attempts while they don't have that debuff immunity that's going to stop all the pure damage against you. I need to have an incredible high ground ward if they do want to continue with this fight up top of the rift. But I'm again, they, they force. It's there, though. You know, going for that fiend's gate underneath that sort of area. You only really do that sort of play if, like, you're looking to go for a bit of a save or you've got an utmost confidence that you've got the vision advantage. But here's that big timing. Orchid coming out for BZM, right. playing alongside Seb with the chakra magic. Be about to pump it in onto him fairly shortly. Even a Glimmer Cape finished up as well, so more survivability coming through from OG as well. Uthu is going to be the target of this Orchid reveal. So a quick and easy kill onto the support. And they should be able to chain that into a tier 1 tower as well. With the tower going down, that's going to give Yuragi enough gold for the BKB. And hopefully it's just going to be from lane to lane for OG. You know, like you said, this is their strongest timing, even though the net worth is favoring gaming gladiators, so to be the ones being proactive across the map. Amanta style coming through from Duraccio as well, so he feels a lot more capable of joining into these fights. He's not as worried about things like the um, the mischance from the Keeper of the Light. You're not worried about things like the Frostbite as well looking to affect you. So I wonder if that will cause him to perhaps play a little bit more aggressively. Of course, I didn't even mention the Orchid there. Uh, the lane isn't exactly in the best spot for them to be able to make Radiant's most plays, and Celery's doing a really good job of just from the tree line, shoving it in with the Nether Blast, making sure not to reveal himself for too long on the lane. But I think going in here, he might just end up giving himself up. Maybe not. I mean, you, and you see the positioning of the heroes on the map, though. There's a, four heroes from OG trying to hunt a Pugno who's... Like you said, shoving out a lane and really taking the farm that no one wants on, on Gaming Gladiators. And meanwhile, Duraccio is getting the Ancients. you got Quinn taking some of the jungle from OG. So, this. The moment the setup is definitely favoring Radiant. It is. I really want to see... They've only got one Sentry Ward to be able to make a play with. So it's so important that Tiger does get down some of this vision to be able to play around with. A decent one set up around this tier two tower. That's the clear objective that they're looking to play for. And it's all setting up for the next like minute and a half as they ping out Ace coming down towards this bottom side. They know he's here. Oh, ZM here as well, potentially confirm that kill. Well, all right, yeah, we... Oh, he does, but uh, like you said, Pipe's not going to do too much first DM, so. Yeah, but blow him up. Should be able to slowly chunk down this tier 2 tower. I mean, I, I guess if there's any critique as well with Dyer is you don't really have the greatest way to find objectives. So it'll take you quite some time until the Razor's got plenty of items to help address that. Uh, you still have to deal with all your other lanes. Because again, Quinn is shoved top. Duraccio's illusions have pushed mid. Well, they know that, like someone's going to die on the map for Gaming Gladiators. And they know this, right? They're wanting to make sure that they just get the most efficiency out of the map. Even with these kills, even with this tower going down, the net worth isn't changing. But the important thing for OG is that Roshan's going to move down towards the right side of the map in 
30 seconds. So they know with this early oriented draft, they want to be able to make the plays uh, to be able to secure that Roshan really quickly. Luckily for them, they've got Eye of the Storm. It's a little way to get some of that armor reduction into the Rosh pit. And, I mean, if they can look to just joink away this tier one mid tower as well, while they're all playing around the general area, that's going to be a nice little bonus for them. Allow them to have a bit of an easier time to secure more of these power runes because they're just as important as ever. What do we make of the... As well? It's a bit more unconventional because we do see depending on the situation. Yeah, I'm a little perplexed by it, to be honest. I mean, maybe he felt like he really wanted to just keep himself away from the Crystal Maid and it gives them another way to be able to interrupt things like the Freezing Field. Also gives them a dispel for when Timber eventually does get into the Aghanim Scepter because you don't have really a Nullifier Builder on Gaming Gladiators right now. You Radiance Bottom oh. Tower is under attack. Feel like they're confident enough to potentially just go into Roche right now. I mean, Gladiators, though, just picking up still a lot of farm for themselves. Going into that Scardi or Duraccio, so it's going to be very effective against the Timbersaur in particular. But really, again, does not go through the BKBs anymore, so it's really going to be around the BKB usage from Yuragi. Luckily for him, still at level 9, uh, sorry, still at 9 seconds. Got a lot to be able to play with. They haven't lost any big objectives off the back of this movement. They're going to be able to TP someone back to be able to defend that mid tower. Feels like Game and a Happy just to make this a farm fest for now. They're out of efficiency. Out of efficiency? -ing? You know what I'm trying to say. OG right now, they're getting a lot of farm on their heroes because they know that they can take the late game if they get into this point. Let's see if this is actually a potential fight they want to take. They see no one else come through the twin gate. But they still don't know where the rest of OG are, so potentially DM is baiting. He's also playing very cautiously. Everyone has TPs as well, so they can very easily look to provide a bit of save to him. Again, he's got a Halberd, he's got a Lotus Orb, he is a Timber Sword just existing on his own, so I think he shouldn't be in too much trouble at all on this top side. This will be a true test, though, right, of how tanky he is. I mean, they were still trying to edge closer and closer, but... Now that team gets under the tower, he's going to be fine. So, do have the wisdom rooms that people need to fall back for as well. Looks like Quinn's going to be able to find their own. And, you know, so what do we feel like is now um, kind of the next game plan for OG? You've got these ages, you've got items being accumulated very shortly with the Sunjin Kyra as well for BZM. Uh, do, you, do you want to try and take this mid tower first and then maybe look at trying to control GG's triangle? I think so. I mean, mid is the easiest one by far to be able to control at this stage, and they would have seen that Ace just TP down to the bottom side of the map. So they know that the only way for him to join in is with the Fiend's Gate. Uh, it's, what, three and a half seconds uh, for him to be able to get to a fight, and luckily for OG, they've got pretty good heroes at being able to burst someone down. So, you know, if they find someone up on this top side of the map or even mid, then, you know, you're going to die before the Underlord gets there with his Atrophy Aura, with his Lotus, with his Pipe of Insight to be able to act as a bit of protection. Mid lane, a little bit of poking going on. Archer is going to reveal himself inside. Well, they've got the numbers at the moment on Gaming Gladiators, but OG is starting to funnel some more heroes into the area just in case the fight does occur. Spirit form for, uh, for Tofu, so he's moving a little faster. Extra cast Archer, range does as well. they want to go for him now? I'm trying to rift in Quinn, that's an aggressive jump with the Remnant. Orchid's on cooldown still for a little bit of time. Bit of course acting as a deterrent though, OG. Won't be able to run forward. Won't be forced to retreat back to their side of the map. DM's a little bit weak. Just gets away. Still had a few seconds on that Lotus Orb, so... have been able to purge off that, uh, that Searing Chains. So they're doing a good job at delaying out this Aegis right now. Still have two and a half minutes on it, and you've got that completed Kai Assange for BZM, so he still feels very confident being able to go for a lot of kills, but GG really don't want to give up this mid-tower. It really is the avenue to be able to make a lot of quick smokes into the areas that GG are looking to farm at highest priority, so they're just playing on the safer side of the mid lane. Dragging the creeps into their tankiest hero, and they've got all the boys behind them to be able to provide assistance. Like, have got Glimmer Cave, have got, of course, Lift on the Rubik. He's, he, can, he can even give the Greater Healing Lotus over to, uh, to Ace if he gets jumped on, so it really does feel like this Underlord is unkillable if the boys are around. I like this from, from either side. Minor thing. DM tries to shove bottom to potentially have a, lay, uh, a wave under the tier 3 tower that 
Gaming Gladiators would be missing if they continue to stay around mid. And then we saw Quinn aggressively cutting this mid wave as well. So, well, they won't need the, the, the Kree wave. Yuragi and BZM just going to be able to tank up the tower. So. About I think Quinn in some danger. He's got the skills, remember. He's going to get it off, but Tiger's still nearby with a frostbite. Not quick enough, unfortunately. Quinn, great reaction, slight remnant out. Once again, avoiding potential death. Yuragi is showing a lone bottom. Got BKB, so he should be able to get away. They have nothing right now that's going to be able to go through a BKB TP away, but that's really not what you're wanting to be using it for. You want to be getting as aggressive as you can. Defensive BKBs are a huge loss right now for OG, so... And they look to make plays potentially around this tier 1 tower top. You know, it's well, still fairly healthy, but again, like we saw from BZM and Yuragi, you can just backdoor it. You know, you can cut all the lanes that you want, but tier 1 towers, they're always going to be pretty easy to be able to take out at this point of the game. Would you agree with Dota Plus currently 35% for Gaming Gladiator, 65% for OG? Uh, yes, just because I feel like OG haven't really put a foot wrong just yet. I mean, you've also got a Spirit Vessel freshly picked up as well for the Keeper of the Light, so it's going to be great against the uh, the Underlord and the uh, the Morphling. Of course, they've got ways to get out of it with the Manta and the Lotus Orb. But Way to be able to chunk through all other HP, be able to prevent the Thunder Rage. from giving a lot to him. They really want to get a BKB use, yeah. Yeah, they won't get it though. Although he has already used the Static Link, so it's really going to enable Durachu inside the team fight now as Yuraki's losing all his damage. Blinding Light's going to be able to give them some respite. They might jump the Tiger next though with the Crystal Maiden revealing herself on the high ground. So Gaming Gladiators want the easy kill, they'll get it just onto a CM though at the end of the day right you still didn't get that BKB made it out you've also got Razor who really is looking for this level 20 he wants to have that extra storm surge movement speed you know might be able to lock him into place briefly with like a bit of malice but you're always going to be able to chase these people down right now Seb he is the main target for a lot of the aggression you can jump onto him that would take away the the big steroid that BZM is looking to play around with it's a scythe of ice being queued up from everyone. They realize how important it is to be able to just, again, it's the burst potential. You know, you can banter off, you can Lotus Orb off a lot of these things. Scythe of ice, not so much. You know, you're really going to need to rely on the supports once those two items come out for both Seb and BZM. You were mentioning before the, their lack of tower damage as well. That's why DZM, uh, BZ, DM, excuse me, <laughs> is going into the flamethrower just to provide them a little bit of that extra output. Radiance top tower. Interesting ward from Tiger. It'd be pretty effective at spotting them. See what they can do with it though. Early Manta Force. Pretty nice target from BZM if they can get rid of the Pugnot. But Ace wants to get involved as well. Maybe this is the fight that Gaming Gladiators can take with all five heroes nearby. Yuragi hasn't used the PKP just yet. Well, forced to do so to escape. And now Deem has no one nearby. Uh, OG, they try and take a fight. They didn't have the numbers advantage on. I'm not sure where Seb was. They just funnel into the area and Gaming Glad is more than happy with that. Yeah, they didn't have the supports to support. That was the big issue, right? Like all of their previous fights that have gone well has been Seb, you know, using that blinding light to prevent a lot of the damage coming through. Like Morphling's uh, illusions were doing a lot just to get- Oh, it is it! No, it is it for Ken! Oh, BZM! Got the wisdom rune though. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, it's worth. <laughs> They would love for this to go over to Tofu. Unlucky. Oh, no, he's already bought he's it already up. Got so, it. Yeah, Celery able to get it. So good itemization coming through from the Game of Gladiator supports. And I mean, it really shows how important it is for OG to just continue to ball up as much as possible. So Game of Gladiator style of just, you know, splitting the map up, getting two lanes at the cost of one, giving an occasional kill here and there. It's paying off. You know, 4K net worth lead. They got nothing out of that first Aegis on OG. And now they're kind of on the back foot where they you know, have this extra Tormentor. They've got this level advantage. They're almost into that Agonim Scepter as well. Or Duraccio, just 600 gold away. So this is oh going to be a very scary timing for OG. They really feels like they haven't made the most of when they were strongest. No, not at all. But a lot of that is also props given to, to Gaming and what they were able to do across the map, which is stalling this one out. Maybe that's, you know, kind of the weakness with OG and a lot of your control they, they itemized to make sure that wasn't an issue on, on gaming gladiators is i mean quinn 
See, Seven is just going to run him down. There's really nothing they need to fear at this stage of the game. Dai got nothing out of that ages. And, well, now what was a 65% for OGs? Now a 55%. And you've, like you said, really gotten out of the scary stage of this game. Ah, going towards a nullifier on the Razor, so they really want to prevent a lot of that save potential coming through from the Glimmer Cape, from the, the Decrep. Four stars, they've got multiple glimmers, like there's so much save potential for whoever gets jumped on first. It's kind of like playing with an IO on Gaming Gladiators without actually having an IO for themselves. You know, they've just got all of this save and it's all for the single target, which OG's draft is almost entirely based around. Rosh has spawned up top though, OG. Already starting to get themselves set up though for the eventual move down to bottom. Underlord just completed a hex. That's a big item for this smoke fight. It is, but all of OG are at least in relatively close uh, proximity this time not around. Not near your Argy though. Looks gonna pop it's up to Ace to start with the hex. He's gonna be able to reveal it. And they should have to telekinesis before the BKB as well. What a hex reveal. You couldn't have asked for a better person to kill to start the fight as well. As now OG just trying to look to cut their losses and no one okay, else will die. But now you completely sacrifice... Oh, they're actually looking for a kill on BZM because they see he's out of mana. Ace... Oh, what a read from Gaming Gladys. Move in with the gate. Get the hex out. Another kill. They'll even be able to spy out Tiger as well. There is no escape for the poor old wolf. More and more kills given over to Gladiators. And Doraccio is already starting Roche. He's just going to solo it, basically. I mean, that's all they need at this point of the game. Morphling, he's not as strong in the laning stage as he used to be. You know, the uh, the potential for that uh, that Aghanim Scepter bump isn't quite as strong as it used to be, but he is still one of those hard counters towards the tip of the sword. And he still hits like an absolute truck in this late stage, so... The crops need to be given over the Gaming Gladiators for recognizing. They, they just, again, they're playing the delay game slightly, but any sort of chance that you can get to be able to just find a pick off, prevent them from getting into their next items. It's all the importance of the Scythe device, right, on the Underlord, but they're going for triple Scythe device on OG right now, and they don't want to let them get to it. He's actually changed it up. He's gone the BKB now. Looks like he needs a little bit more survivability. Kind of crazy as a Timber, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, indeed it is. I just... I wonder if he needs to do this, right? He's almost hit up onto level 20. So, he's going to be able to have that extra 20% magic resist. Just buys up the Ogre Axe for now. Would potentially change that into the Aghanims, but again, you're going up against Quinn, who's got this Yule Scepter as well, and he's been pretty good with his casting of it, right? Yes. While he's in the Slide of Fist, he's actually using that as the extra uh, physical range to be able to get into a space to be able to cast it onto these squishier backlights. And here comes the Siege. See how creative OG are going to be able to get with their defense. I mean, currently you still have Yuragi outside the base, completing the Nullifier, which will be done after this camp. So he's got no more camps. Back and sell the magic wand. Pretty necessary. I mean, to me, it's still Ember Spirit that's the main target, right? DM, early BKB. He's just gonna get Blinding Light pushed back inside the base, but the Underlord is incredibly tanky. And now Quinn's gonna be able to jump Yuragi as well. They wanna try and force up the BKB. They won't be able to do so, but... OG, they start the fight without all of their heroes nearby, and now it's going to be a 4v5. They do force the buyback out of Tiger, though. Might be able to deal with oh, the first, like, great reaction Hex from Ace, but BZM. Jen's going to be able to hold him into place, but that's where Dim comes into play with the Lotus Hop. He doesn't have it for himself now, though. Could be vulnerable, but Gaming Gladiators... Not going to give OG an opportunity to potentially find a way back in with diving deeper inside the base. They're going to try and refill up in the resources and maybe go for another push. I mean, we'll wait for the Satanic, which Dorachio now has. Hey boy. Yeah, we at least get rid of the vision they've got here for Tiger. So, haven't lost the tier 3 tower just yet, but this lead is continuing to grow more and more and more. Seb, he's got a lot of money saved up, though. 5,000 gold, getting so close to being able to just purchase up that Scythe of Ice in its entirety. Oh, aggressive waveform, Seb. She's going to die inside the base. Another buyback expended out of one of the OG supports, and how are you going to be able to address the Morphling? Look at the positioning from the Rachio. I don't know. Nothing he needs to fear. 
He's still got Satanic. He's still got the Aegis to be able to play around with. You've got a lot of other heroes making your life a whole lot more challenging. That Scythe of Vice on a Storm Spirit without a BKB. Just oh, Pyga, that's a free kill. He bought back. All right. 4v5 now. And that's another. also a second dieback. 3v5 now is gaming. Gladiators, they are just crippling OG. We have not seen them be able to do anything for the span of the last 10 minutes. Yuragi might even die under the T4 tower as well. They are just dancing in and out. Perfect team fight Another engagement. Side. Hex is there, waiting for the telekinesis chain control. It is all the reigning champions here throughout the DPC year in gaming. Gladiators, well, they're going to be able to take your game one pretty convincingly. Yes, they will. 